Now, Energy Cabinet Secretary Davis Chirchir is currently addressing on the matters that happened yesterday on matters power. Please let us cross over there and listen in. The loss of the Kisumu Moroni line led to sudden increase in power flow on the Juja Lesos Moroni link, leading to overload at Olkaria, Transformer, Dandora, Juja, Transformer links. This led to a cascade of generation drips, resulting in widespread power outages. However, parts of Western region including Bungoma, Kakamega, Busia remain on supply from Musaga substation using the alternative source of supply that we get from Uganda. The power restoration started immediately and by one in the morning 60% of the customers have been restored. Uh, you would have noticed if you were still awake that at about 11 p.m. at night, specifically 11.53, we had another sudden drip that we were able to restore uh, immediately because uh, when you're restoring, like I mentioned before, you need to match supply and demand. And uh, we had a small, we're trying to do it quickly, and there was another drip at 23.53, which was uh, contained very quickly. The Kenya electricity grid is currently operating sub-optimally. I ask the engineers, what do you mean by sub-optimally? Uh, uh, with limited spinning reserves, low inertia, high production uh, proportion of intermittent generation, low hydro generation and insufficient voltage control. This condition made the system vulnerable to systems disturbances. Uh, when I give you the statement, I will have talked to the proposed mitigation uh, to remove some of those system constraints, like one, the western part of Kenya is serviced, like we said, by Alcaria and uh, the hydros, the seven cascade uh, uh, hydros, and the transmission links are currently constrained because industry has been growing, the power users have been growing, and we have not upgraded the transmission network, and we are using an, an, an 80 megawatts dimension uh, a transmission link to transmit 140 megawatts, and you would only expect it to drip to be able to save itself. So what we are doing, uh, members of the media and Kenyans, is we are building a line, an alternative line, to support west of Kenya through from Alcaria through Bomet, through Narok, sorry, Narok, Bomet, Bomet, all the way to a window to be able to support the transmission that goes through Lesos, like I've mentioned, and therefore be able to remove the constraint uh, and improve the capacity of uh, carrying more megawatts to the western part of the country where we don't have much generation. The loan facility has been signed uh, and we are ready to start. We're getting funding from uh, South Korea and Africa Development Bank and we are at the tendering stage and we should be able to start building that network. However, construction of a network of that capacity is not a quick fix. It will take some 20 months, but we'll be working on how to mitigate the challenge of constraint on the transmission network to be able to avoid the system being overloaded. We are also constructing a new 132 to 33 kV Sondu uh, station or line and substation to further improve the supply to South Nyanza. Uh, if we were to have enough time to talk about how we serve South Nyanza from Moroni to Chemosit, Chemosit, Sotit, Tokigadi, Ndiwa, and then Awendo, we could actually service by building a direct link from Sondu uh, to Ndiwa and be able to avoid overloading the line going through Sotik to Ndiwa and causing those kind of challenges. We are also increasing uh, the 220, 132 KV transformer capacity at Lesos uh, to evacuate additional um, additional uh, power to that uh, from Alcalia to western part of the country and uh, the North Rift region. We are also fast tracking the completion of Kimoka. Kimoka is a station out of Kikuyu, uh, somewhere here. 
uh, Malasa substation, which is being done by Ketroko to the load, the Dandora, the Nairobi North, what we refer to as Nairobi North Line. So these are all constraints where the lines are overloaded. They are not able to carry the load, which is demanded by the customers at the extreme end. Um, we also have uh, declining spinning reserves uh, because of uh, lack of generation for a while. You know, we had uh, a moratorium which was placed by uh, government, and when we removed that moratorium, Parliament placed another moratorium. So we've not been able to work on new PPAs to, to be able to give us enough power. So we currently have a uh, diminishing uh, spinning reserve uh, in line with the increasing base load. Uh, we need more uh, spinning reserve. And to that end, Kenyan is currently replacing the existing hydro turbines, uh, runners with modern ones that will have capability of bigger operating range. This will address the need of spinning reserves in the short term. We also have lack of plant to provide auxiliary services in Asia uh, for resilience, or resilience for that matter. Implementation of high ground falls uh, project in Eastern and as well as other potential hydro projects in North Rift, South Nyanza, and uh, West Region to support frequency regulation and, uh, and base load. We also need to fast track the implementation of battery energy storage system that will help to address the intermittence of the variable uh, energy and provide voltage stability. Uh, what are we saying briefly? Uh, that might sound, uh, you know, and the engineers right there. We did say we have two major challenges. We have challenge of generation. For a while, we did not have enough rains, and we, we, we were very down on the hydrology in, in uh, Masinga. In fact, we have not started generating out of Masinga to date, in spite of the heavy rains. We are generating only out of Kamburu, Kitaru, Kindaruma, and Kiambere. Uh, for good reasons why we have not started pushing Masinga, uh, because of the challenge of uh, maybe flooding with Garissa. But for a long time, we have not generated out of Masinga because there was not enough water. It was down completely. But having had the rains, and when we can generate now out of Masinga, the transmission constraint is a challenge. Like if we need, for example, 200 megawatts in the western part of the country, the transmission links can only say carry 100 megawatts, to put it in simplistic terms. And therefore, when the system tries to draw more power uh, to support the 200 megawatts, the line gives way because it cannot carry that capacity. And that is why we are building alternative routes through Narok. Um, why Narok so thick? We've built, we've built Olkaria Narok. That one has been built already, 132 kV line. We have built Chemosit all the way to Bomet. And the link between Narok and Bomet, which will then complete the link all the way down to um, a window, will give us that relief uh, so that we do not have these challenges of the network dropping every so often. So we know the problem. The problem is lack of investment in the transmission network. And you do know that today the transmission network, uh, in spite of the unbundling of the energy sector into generation, which is done by Kenjian and the IPPs, the transmission network done by Ketraco and Kenya Power doing the distribution, the off-taking. The challenge with Ketraco is that it is fully funded by government. And at times like now, when government is a bit uh, uh, constrained, uh, and for a while, uh, in the last uh, several years, we have not invested as much in the transmission network. We are now bringing in uh, the PPP, Private Public Partnership, to build some of the networks. We are giving out uh, Gilgil, Tika, Mala to Konza, or is that uh, Isinya? We are giving out a number of networks to be built by private capital. What does that mean? It relieves the trucker from looking for funding from government and having the kind of challenges that we've had. So, Tik, uh, sorry, Bomet, Narok should have been built a while ago. In fact, it was a project that should have been built between 2016 and 2021. But uh, with funding from uh, the French uh, Development Bank, but that did not materialize because of the challenges of funding. And so we are on it. That's why I said we know the problem. We're trying to address it. This time round, we hope we'll get it right and be able to sort out the Western Kenya uh, voltage and frequency challenges which keep dripping the network.
So that was the problem yesterday. We are working on mitigation measures to see even as we take the long haul building of the networks because, you know, building a line of about 90 kilometers will not be done in two days. We will work with the engineers to see the mitigation interventions that will relieve the overvoltage or the capacity of the lines so that we are able to have alternative routes to be able to uh, support the network. Like I've said, we are doing a new bay in Lesos with a third transformer to be able to relieve one of the links. We are going to see whether we can do a 33 KV line between Narok and Bomet so that as we build the long haul line, which will take about 20 months, we are able to uh, reduce the constraint on the transmission network and be able to remove the challenge of uh, constant power outages. The other one which uh, are really, as regarding generation and more importantly, um, the transmission links for Western Kenya, one of the mitigations or intervention that will be going back with engineers to sit on and give some straight answers as we look at you in the eye is uh, load shedding. What would need to be done instead of overloading a line that flows through a line and therefore be able to only carry the amount of power which the line can carry. So instead of pushing the lines to an overload, we will basically give the line the load that it can carry and therefore have some kind of schedule load shedding so that we do not unnecessarily have to bring down the whole country because of uh, an overload which cascades all the way down but more importantly have a schedule uh, load shed in particular areas where the lines are seriously constrained that is not to say we don't have enough power but where a line is constrained and it cannot carry so much power why push the line to carry what it cannot carry and cause a national trip? So we'll be scheduling some minimal load shedding and we'll work with the various uh, Kenyans and the leaders to understand why the load shedding may be necessary so that we do not continue having to uh, experience the kind of uh, national blackouts we have seen uh, in the short while. Uh, thank you very much. Can we start from here and come this side? Thank you. Many of you wrote in the back of the community. At the beginning of the statement, you stated that 